and we are live I believe hopefully you guys can hear me and see me welcome welcome um hope you guys are enjoying your enjoying your bank holiday Monday so far and thank you for joining me giving up your time appreciate that I'm just getting things set up on my other screen oops that's the wrong one right um yeah, welcome to everyone. So let me just see what's going on in the comments. Get rid of that. Straight away, Innocent, thank you so much. You were the best. I passed my theory test yesterday. Well done. Congratulations. After following your YouTube class for about three weeks, I'm so grateful. Not a problem. Thank you for coming back and letting me know. Um, keep the practice up. Let me know if you're taking driving lessons at the moment. Um, Cause it'd be interesting to know if you are taking driving lessons or you're gonna now start booking your driving test, sorry, driving lessons. Um, Cause I always like to know whether you guys are doing it side by side or one first, the very first and then going off to do your driving lessons. Right, so the way this is going to work this week, I am going to do overview as I always do, because there's always new faces joining. So I'm going to do an overview of the theory test. I'm going to do a 20 question mock test on this one, because I'm going to do another hazard perception. You guys are still messaging me. You're struggling on the hazard perception. So I'm going to do another live demo, sort out any issues or problems that you may have live. And I've got a couple of announcements to do as well. I did mention last week, I've got a couple of announcements of things I've been working on. I wanna do that before we go into the mock test as well. But if you guys got any questions, drop it in the chat, let me know. Hey, hey, I passed Saturday, 45 out of 50 and 60 out of 75. Thanks so much. Congratulations on passing. Um, as I get, I appreciate you guys coming back and letting me know, cause you don't have to do that. Um, it's my motivation to keep going and obviously it's motivation to other people to see that you guys are actually passing and the videos are helping. So I really appreciate you guys coming back. Also, put in the chat, let me know if you're taking driving lessons or you're looking to now start to book your driving lessons. Um, uh, Chester, good evening. My first time here. Welcome, welcome. And have been waiting for, for you. <laughs> Um, I came across your videos a few days ago and have been watching back to back home. My exams tomorrow at 12 noon. Uh, what's tomorrow? Tuesday, 12 noon. Um, yeah, if you've got any questions or issues that you're struggling with, drop it in the chat, let me know. And hopefully we can brush you up ready for tomorrow. And hopefully you can pass. Let me know how you get on for tomorrow as well. Come back and let me know. Either just comment on the videos or one of the videos or um, uh, Instagram. Contact me on Instagram, let me know how you're going because it's interesting to keep tabs on you. But yeah, if you've got any questions, anything that you're struggling, Chester, let me know. Put it in the chat and I'll try and help you out this afternoon. Welcome, Chitan. James, welcome, welcome. My fairy test is on the 9th of June. I need all the hints to pass at once. Let me know what you want hints about. It's all about you guys. You let me know and I'll try and cater for you as much as I possibly can. Good luck on the night as well. If we don't talk again before that. Congratulations on passing. And thank you for coming back and letting me know. Trust me, I appreciate you guys coming back to say, um, even the ones that's failing, let me know. Cause like I said, we can always tweak stuff because I'm still always learning from you guys as well. I'm about 12 hours into my lessons. Okay, so you're on your way. Are you on the main roads here? I'm assuming 12 hours, is that 12 hours as in single hours or 12 times two, as in 24 hours or six times two? Are you doing single hours or double hours? It's a simple way of putting it. James has got a Wednesday 31st. Let me know if it's AM or PM. Again, if you've got any issues, let me know. Sort it out before Wednesday comes. I'm here to help you guys as much as I possibly can. It's better to do it live. You can get it all sorted now. My test is tomorrow, 11 AM. We've got an AM test. Um, again, same with you, Lucy. Good luck for tomorrow. 
and let me know if you are struggling with anything in particular that you want answered here and now. Club booking my driving test yesterday and it was a pay no dates until like next year. As I mentioned earlier on, um, I say earlier on, in previous lives, Monday, yesterday was Sunday. Monday's 6 a.m. Early start for you guys. Jump online, have your details to hand and try to get some of the new dates that gets released every single Monday at 6 a.m. That's your best bet. If you've got an instructor who's in the community, maybe they're in a WhatsApp group. To be honest, you need a test day, any type of test day. And if they're in a WhatsApp group in their local area, they may be able to try to swap it for you. But you need the bargaining tool first, i.e. a test date. Welcome, William. Nice to see you back. My theory test is this Friday. I am confident, being revising and being watching your videos again and again and again. Um, it's good to have confidence. Don't be overconfident, but it's good to have confidence with that. Um, so I'm assuming you've got no issues, nothing that you want to put in the chat for me to help you with. I, I failed four times twice, has a perception. All right, I'm gonna do a hazard perception demo a little bit later on, so stay tuned for that. Hopefully that will help you. Got another one who's got a test on Wednesday. Good luck with the test on Wednesday. Do let me know how you get on. I like to keep tabs on you guys who's got tests coming up. Is there any other way I can reach you, please, as I'm not on Instagram, just Facebook. I'm so impressed with the good feedback from comments. I just want to pass for tests. Test, tomorrow. I'm assuming that's a test. Um, the only other way is email. Um, and that's info at drivingtheoryuk.com. In saying that, um, when's your test? Let me just go back to your... Your test is Wednesday. Hold that thought. It may not work, but I hold that thought and I'll tell you another way you may have to get in contact with me. But Wednesday may be too soon. Took my advice. What was my advice? I give it a lot of advice. Tell me what my advice was. <clears throat> I've read book for July the 17th, July 17th, and it's June this week. So you've got a lot of time in hand to study. Again, if you've got any issues, let me know so I can guide you in the right direction. Are you available to teach me driving? I'm not available. I only do intensive courses and my courses are fully booked up. I just found out I literally booked up until October. I um, found out this morning, which is not good news for me because I've not taken my holiday yet. Um, uh, so that's not possible, I'm afraid. Oh, AM test, okay. Hopefully you're a morning person. I did say if you're not a morning person, do not book an AM test because it doesn't work. You have to be a morning person. Um, otherwise, you're going to go in there kind of drowsy and grumpy. Booked for Wednesday. Okay, you got a Wednesday test. Well done. It's passing on one mocks. Um, passing mock test is good. It's a sign that you're doing all right, but it depends on how you're passing it. Do you memorize the answers? Or are you understanding the questions? There's it's like there's a subtle difference. If you memorize the answers, yeah, you're gonna pass mock test. But it doesn't mean to say you're gonna pass the real test. If you're understanding the question, you should be passing the real test. There's a slight difference. Would you recommend doing questions I haven't seen yet on the app? Would you recommend? I'd recommend doing all the questions, even reset the app from time to time to make sure. Um cover every single question possible. Like, like I said, I would reset the app from time to time and then do it again, just in case there's some question that doesn't come up. Because once the app gets to know what questions you sort of understand, they sometimes keep front up the same questions. So yeah, reset the app. Jones, hello, you're doing a, you doing a work I really appreciate. I appreciate for letting me know. Thank you very much. Appreciate your comments.
I'm struggling with highway code, road and traffic signs, please. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do traffic, if traffic signs are going to come up in the test. It's only 20 quick question mock test today. Um, I'm not sure if road signs are going to come up, but there is in the Study With Me series, you probably watched it already, um, if you've been following the channel, um, there is a road sign um, mock test, 20 question mock test on road signs that breaks it down. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't stress over road signs too much because the ferry test will give you about maximum five road signs. Um, so if you know the other 45, you're going to pass anyway. They're not going to give you more than five road signs on there. So I wouldn't stress over it too much. Just make sure your other knowledge is tight. But you do need road signs for when you pass your driving, sorry, pass your ferry test for your driving. So you do need to brush up on that. What other details aside from provisional license? I'm assuming you're talking about booking driving test. If that's the case, you want your ferry test certificate number. So have your driver's license and ferry test certificate number for the Monday morning. That situation. Also bring your ferry test certificate on the day of your driving test, just in case your instructor doesn't mention it. Thank you for the time you spent with us. I passed my tests last week, Wednesday. Congratulations, 44 for ferry, 64 has a perception. Congratulations um, on passing and thank you for coming back and letting me know. Thank you so much for making me a hazard pro. Not a problem. You're welcome. Great, my screen's just shut down. Right. Thank you for coming back. Thank you for the kind words. Thank you for coming back and thank you for watching. Go into the settings. There's a thing in the settings that you can reset um, questions that you have not seen. It should be in there. Hello, 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 welcome. What would you say is the best way to revise? Right, everybody's different. Um, everybody's different. If you're using the apps, I would suggest doing category by category. There's 14 categories. If you didn't know, study each category. When you get comfortable, move, move on to the next one and then go on to mock tests. You can start doing 20 question mock tests, 30 question mock tests, then 40 question mock tests until you build up to the big one, 50 question mock test. Most of you are diving straight into a 50 question mock test. The problem with that is that you're going to be missing out on other questions and maybe some categories as well. So it's better to do each category. As I keep saying, you need to understand it, not just for the theory passing that, for your driving tests as well. So the easiest way to study is to do each category. Yes, it's time consuming, but think about it this way. Do it right the first time, pass the first time, not a problem. Do it wrong the first time, fail the first time, fail the second time. It's going to cost you more money in the long run. If you're not an apps person, um, obviously watch the videos. It's not, I'm not the only channel one there. You've got the other robot ones, if you like. Um, that's another way. And if you do the books, then you can highway code and there's other theory test books. But I'd be honest, for me, I'm not a book reader. Um, so that wouldn't work for me. So you need to find out what's best for you. But that's my advice. With that, there's not one hard, fast rule for everyone. I have done my test last week and I have failed by one. So it's more studying. What you need to do is go on to the paperwork they gave you. At the bottom, it gives you the categories of uh, questions you failed in that category. And my advice, stop saying you failed by one. You got, if you failed by one, that means you got 42 technically. Um, you've got eight questions wrong, so you need to build up your knowledge. It's weak. If you've got eight questions wrong, um, your knowledge is weak, so you need to go back to the drawing board. Again, go back to the category, starting with the category that you've got the questions wrong in. That's your baseline, and I would go back from all, 40 to four, ah, all 14 categories and do it that way. Juliana saying hello to everyone. Hello to you, Juliana. And here, look at this, Sexy D pass. Well done to you. And thank you for coming back and letting me know. Had me hanging on. I think your test was last week, Tuesday, wasn't it? The whole week almost you had me hanging on when I was worried about you. But congratulations. I forgive you because you passed. 
Um, I pray that past my test tomorrow will invite you <laughs> for dinner. That's, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. I hope you pass too. Interesting. Bill Plant Driving School. Thank you for helping me get through this. Not a problem. Are you a PDI? Because if you're getting through this, you're, I'm assuming you're a PDI, even though you've got Bill Plant Driving School in there. Let me know. Right, so I'm going to... Oh, it's your daughter. Oh, no problem. Not a problem at all. Thank you for letting me know. Glad you're helping out. A fellow instructor's family. Um, right, so... <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, right, so what I'm going to do a quick overview, just do a couple of announcements that I've got. And then I need to move on to the mock test and for it just got, I've got a Zoom call straight after this. So, as standard overview, I'm not assuming that you guys, the new ones, know how the ferry test works. Because this morning in the classroom, I had two students who didn't know it was 50 questions. They're just doing mock tests. They did not realise the real test was 50 questions. So, you got 50 questions, 14 categories, which I did say on my channel in the... Um, Playlist study with me, there's 14 categories, 20 questions for each category gives you a head start on that with explanations. That's the way I suggest that you go if you're starting from scratch doing the theory test. So it's 50 questions on the day that you got to do. You have 57 minutes. Let's cancel that. 57 minutes to do the 43 questions. By the, I'll be honest with you, if you studied really well, you're not going to take 57 minutes, but if you have to take the 57 minutes, take it because you want to make sure you pass. There's no harm in taking 57 minutes rather than rushing, rushing and clicking on the wrong answer by mistake because there's some subtle answers that are similar. And if you're not careful, you can click the wrong one. At my test tomorrow, please pray for me and give me some advice or tips I've filled before. My tip is breathe when you go in there. Think straight and always think safety. Safety, safety, safety. If you don't know what the answer is, don't stress, don't panic, don't freak. Flag it, move on. Then once you've done that, go back to the flag ones where you've got a lot more time to think about it. Work backwards, work out what it can't be. And then sometimes you're left with a 50-50. So rather than looking for the right answer, one out of four, you may now be looking for a right answer, one out of two, 50-50. That's my advice to you on that. But always make sure you think about the safety factor. Um, where are we at? Has a perception. Um, 14 videos, 13 of them have single hazards. One of them's got a double hazards, two fives. You need to get 44 out of 75 to pass that. You, you have to average at least a three on every clip. If your average is below three, you are going to fail it. But as I said, I'm gonna do a demonstration a little bit later on, so stay tuned for that if you are struggling with the hazard perception. There is no tricks. Again, I had in the classroom this morning, they're um, they trying to trick you like the examiners will. There's no tricks. The questions are worded badly. Yes, I agree with that, but there is no tricks. The theory test is black and white, it's safe or it isn't. You're looking for the safe option. It's simple as that. Um, safety. Always looking for the safe option. If the question doesn't lead to safety, you're looking for a controlled outcome, just like the driving test is. Safety, control. Two things the examiner looks for, that's the two things you're looking for in the theory test. So a safe answer, safe option. If it's not a safe option, you're looking for a controlled outcome in terms of the answer. I struggle to understand, take too much time to understand. What do you mean by taking too much time? You're taking too much time over the question or just taking too much time in general? Just clarify that for me, please. And then you thank me so much. I'm assuming I've answered one of your questions. Oh, it's about your tests and tips. Sorry, I'm just trying to keep up with track with the, the comments. All right, I've got you, I'm with you. You, in saying that, take too much time. Take as much time as you need. It's simple as that. It's better to take too much time and pass it than try to rush it and fail it. 
Right, control. As I said, it's a controlled outcome that you are looking for. And do not overthink it. Do not make it personal to you. The test isn't about you. It's about the theory side of driving. And it has to be what we call a generic answer for the same answer for everyone across, across the country. If you make it personal, you're now looking for an answer that's related to you. The chances are you're going to select a wrong answer. And someone put in the comments, failed by one. If you haven't watched that video, I suggest you go and watch it. When you tell yourself you failed by one, you are selling yourself short. You got eight questions wrong. And also in the video, it says that you got at least five categories wrong. If there's 14 categories, you got five categories wrong. That's over a third of the categories. There's a weakness in your knowledge. You should be aiming for 50 out of 50. That way, if you don't get 50, you fall short, 47, 48, you're still passing. If you aim for 43, the chances are you're going to fall short. So anyone who's failed their fairy test by one or two marks, you did not fail by one or two marks. You failed by eight or nine. You needed one more to pass, but you failed by eight or nine. There is a weakness in your knowledge. You need to brush up on it. Right, um, let's just keep an eye on this. Right, so we've got a couple of announcements. First of all, someone, I can't remember who it was now. Someone's got their test tomorrow, wanted to contact me. Last few weeks I've been working on, let's just get my screen share up so you can see what I'm talking about. Screen share, screen share. I've been working on my website. My website is not finished, it's not completed, but it is live. Some of you have been going on there and contact me. So I'm just checking the um, um, comments, sorry. Sorry, yes, the website is now live and some of you have been going on there, contact me and everything else. So it's still work in progress. I've got a few things to finish off on that. But if you guys want to reach out to me, you need to go to, if it works, the consultation page. You can now book a call with me. I'm giving free 15 minute calls. Um, and you just go on there, choose your time slot. I get the message, I book it into my diary and I will give you a ring at a time that you have selected. You can now talk to me about anything driving, whether it's your theory, or your driving test, anything at all to do with driving, you can reach me that way, that's the best way. And like I said, I'm gonna to talk to you personally and I can sort out any issues that you may have. So that is now live and up and running, I believe. Um, so you can do that from today, if that's what you wanna do. Um, I have a course coming up, which leads me to my next thing. I would sign up here, it registers your interest. So if you are struggling with your theory test and you want to be part of the course or register your interest when it goes live, you need to click on that, fill in the details, an email goes out to you how to study, the um, study guide that goes with that. My email comes to me that I know that you're interested in the course and I will contact you when it's about to go live and offer you the opportunity to join me on that. Also, what I'm doing is, let me just come back out of that. I've got a Discord server, which I want to move most of you lot, all of you lot, into that. So it becomes a community where we can all talk together, chat together. I can actually go live in there from time to time, answer any questions. I just need to do some more detail, bits and pieces on that, and that will be going live hopefully next week at some point. And I could do live classes in there as well for you guys. And the last announcement, so let me just catch up with this. What is the speed limit after the sign dual carriageway? Please answer. What sign are we talking about? I can't give you the, well, let me, I've done, let me just keep it simple. You haven't given me what sign you're talking about. The speed limit on the dual carriageway, national speed limit is 70 miles an hour for a car driver. If it's a towing vehicle, heavy goods vehicle, it's 60 miles now. Hopefully that answered your question, but like I said, you didn't give me a sign to know what you're talking about. I'm assuming you're talking about my website, it's the same as the channel, drivingtheoryuk.com. 
is the website address on that. But the last announcement I've got is I've been working on, sorry, please can I take pen and paper to the test center for me to put things, no, this is not allowed. When you go into the test center, you are, I won't say you're gonna be searched, they're gonna ask you to empty your pockets. You can't have any jewelry, no necklaces or anything on you. If you've got a bag, you pull it all in a bag, you're gonna get a key to a locker and you put everything into the locker. And then you go to your desk when you've been shown um, to. So you can't take anything in there. You can't even take a bottle of water in there. So no, you need to know your stuff. You can't be writing stuff down because they would just see that as um, cheating basically, or a potential to cheat, if that makes sense. Right, the last announcement I've got is I've been working with the DBSA. I have now, partly because of you guys and the channel's growth, granted license from the DVSA to use the official training material from the DVSA. Because it's licensed, I cannot use it on the YouTube channel and I cannot discuss it as in show the questions on the lives. It will have to be in a class situation or a membership situation. They are doing their checks on me to make sure who I, I say who I am, I say I am, as in an ADI, blah, 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 they're running their checks. I've got access to the dashboard, but I haven't got access to the questions as yet. Because it's bank holiday, there's been a delay with that. But hopefully I get my licenses on next um, this week at some point. So let me just repeat that. I have now been licensed by the DVSA to use their official training materials, which are the official questions, the official um, has a perception, but I cannot use it on live streams. I cannot use it on my YouTube channel. It has to be off the platform. So that is something that I'm gonna to put together and do a package, which be a membership package. And what I'm gonna be doing is giving that license. At the moment, they've given me access to 25 licenses. So obviously I can give it to 20, not give it, but it's gonna be paid course. And part of that paid course is me doing a classroom session to the 25 people um, once a week for probably an hour, an hour and a half, where I'm gonna go through with growth Start again, go for it with you guys. I can see exactly what you're doing, how you're studying, every category, every mock test, when you logged in, how long you logged in for, so I can give you 100% help with that. So if you are struggling, I suggest you go onto my website, fill in that study guide, it registers your interest, and when I'm ready to go, I can notify you, and if you're willing to join, then I will sign you up and go from there. So at the moment, I've got access to 25 licenses and I will be given, not given, but signing 25 students up who are struggling. I won't say it's a first come first serve. If you are really, really struggling, then obviously it's those are the people that I'm willing to help. If you can get through it by the apps, with the videos, with the lives, then obviously feel free to do that. But if you need my help, this is going to be for you. But as I, I will repeat, I cannot use it on the lives. I cannot use it on the YouTube channel because it's now the official license from the DVSA. So let's get with the chats. Uh, that's not a problem. That's why I'm here. Hope it, hopefully that helps. I don't know, because like I said, I haven't got my hand on the, I, I had the interview with them on Wednesday. They gave me a quick demonstration. Um, I need to test it out first because I don't like using things that I've not tested out. As I said, I don't even use the DVSA app because I find it clunky. Um, I use the driving test success app, the four in one app. So I'm not gonna, as much as I've got the licenses, if it doesn't work for me, I'm not gonna be doing it. But um, from the what they showed me, I can implement that with my training because it looks pretty good, but I need to be using it rather than someone demonstrating it to me. So what the cost is, I don't know as yet. And it probably be monthly, it won't be that expensive to be fair, but um, you've got to understand the time that goes in because I'm going to spend time going through every mock test that you guys do, every category that you guys do, and I'll be running a classroom session attached to that via Zoom as well. And Zoom is not my favourite thing to use as well, to be honest, but hey. We all have to learn at some point. Thank you very much. Right, so what are we doing? Mock test. 
Let's get the mock test up. Right, so this is a 20 question mock test. For those of you that are new, driving theory, screen, 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 screen. Um, the way this works is you read the question, read the answers. Hopefully you can see my cursor. This will be A, this will be B, this will be C, this will be D, and just type it into the chat. A, B, C, D, and we can discuss if it needs discussing. So first question from the vulnerable road user category, which is the most vulnerable road user? A, lorry driver, B, tractor driver, C, car driver, D, motorcyclist. So just type in the chat A, B, C, or D. Just let me know. The other thing I will add as well with that study guide on my website, you will get it sent through email. There's a link to join the Discord. That link may not work because the Discord is not up and running. It's, uh, it's there, but it's not up and running as yet. So if the link doesn't work, don't stress. I've got, I will have your email address and I will email you the link once it's up and running and you can just jump into Discord and ask any particular question. And with that, I will see the question straight away. When you guys type questions on the videos and the Instagram, I don't always get it straight away. I'm not very good at doing Instagram because I'm doing 101 things outside of that. But this call is definitely where you're going to be able to get me 24-7. Right, so what have we got? I've got D. You guys are going for D. D. Right, most of you are going for D. So you've got lorry driver, tractor driver, car driver, motorcyclist. Motorcyclist out of all of that is going to be the most vulnerable. Um, on that, so that's the correct answer. Right, so what's likely to happen if you put too much oil in your engine? So what's likely to happen if you put too much oil in your engine? The timing belt will slip. The air intake will become blocked. The oil seals will leak, the clutch pedal will lock. Again, just type in the chat. Seiji, hi, doing the plasma theory test last week. I'm only watching your YouTube videos. Thank you for your explanations. No problem, congratulations on passing. And as usual, thank you for coming back and let me know that you have passed. Appreciate that. I am seeing these. I'm assuming that's from the last question. The D's that's on here. Right, I've got a C. Oh, it's good to see you back, Nani. You're still coming back. I appreciate that. C, C, and C. Um, yeah, oil seals will leak again. Little tip, look for the golden nuggets. For those of you who got a dry um, fairy test this week, what's like to happen if you put too much oil? Got oil in the question, it's got oil in the answer. It doesn't always work, but like I keep saying, if it's got a connection, you have to shortlist it as a possible. Oops. You're waiting at a level crossing. What must you do for train passing but the lights keep flashing? Edge over the stop line and look for trains, park and investigate, carry on waiting, phone the signal operator. So which one do you think is A, B or C or D? I'm assuming, again, the last question was C. So, just waiting for the comments to come through or the answers to come through. So, we have C's. Okay, most of you are going for C's, um, and the answer is C. You just carry on waiting. 
Um, trains normally go in pairs, so if one's gone from right to left, there's normally another one coming from left to right. That's why the barriers are down and we'll stay down until both trains are gone, or all the trains are gone. You're about to overtake a cyclist. Why should you leave them as much room as you would give to a car? The cyclist might have to make a left turn. The cyclist might speed up. The cyclist might get off their bicycle. The cyclist might be unsettled if you pass too near them. Again, if you guys, especially for those of you that's got a fairy test this week, if you have any questions, put it in the chat and let me answer it while we're going through the 20 question mock test. Or if anyone's got any questions, don't be afraid to put it in the chat. Right, what have we got? I've got, oops, I've got a D. Someone's gone, someone's got, ugh, it's not working, there we go. Right, someone's gone for a C, we'll see, cyclists may get off the bicycle. If the cyclists are gonna get off the bike, it means nothing to you. Um, the answer is going to be D. Cyclists may be unsettled if you pass too near. If you pass too close to a cyclist, they're going to be swerving all over the place. So that is going to be the answer. It's going to be D. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? Next to the phone? Well away from the carriageway? On the hard shoulder? with your vehicle so where's the best where's the best place to wait for help right we have Chess is going for B. I've got B from Jones. Um, and then most of you are going for B. And the answer is next to the phone, well away from the carriageway on the hard shoulder with your vehicle. It's going to be well away from the carriageway, ideally behind the barrier if he's got a barrier. If he hasn't got a barrier, you need to get as high as you can on the grass verge, well away from the carriageway, just in case someone loses control. At traffic lights, what does it mean when the amber light shows on its own? Now this is interesting, let's see how much you guys know about your traffic lights. So at traffic lights, what does it mean when the amber light shows on its own? Go if no pedestrians are crossing, stop at the stop line, prepare to go, go if the way is clear. Right, so we have B, B, it's interesting, most of you are going for B, which is good, it's good you know your stuff, it's stop at the stop line, just in case, for those of you who struggle with lights, you start from the bottom, always from the bottom, signs, bottom, going to top, so, um, Starting from the bottom, green is the light. Let's move up there. Green is the bottom light, then amber on its own means stop at the stop line, and then red, which means stop. And then it's going to go red and amber together, and then go to green. So it's green, amber, red, red and amber together, and then it goes to green. Right. Stop at the stop line. You're on the motorway, when can you use hazard warning lights? So when can you use your hazard warning lights? When a vehicle is following 
too closely, when you're being towed by another vehicle, when you're using the hard shoulder as a running lane, when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead. There's a few options on there that it could be. See if you guys can apply the safety factor. Masha, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I always butcher, butcher people's names. Masha, hi to you, welcome. I'm assuming that's your first time because I've not seen your name before. Right. I have got D, D, Right, all of you are going for Ds, which is a good thing, um, because it is D. Um, like I said, there's other options on there. Um, when a vehicle's falling closely, you wouldn't use your hazard lights, it's pointless, because he knows he's been an idiot. When you're being told by another vehicle, you could use your hazard lights. When you're using the hard shoulders of running lane, you shouldn't be using the hazard lights. And the other options, when you slow down quickly because of danger ahead, but that's the safest option and that's when it should be used. So you, for those of you that chose D, um, you're totally correct. At an incident, a casualty isn't breathing. What should you do while helping them to start breathing again? What should you do? Shake them firmly, put, put their arms across their chest, open their airway, roll them onto their side. So let's see what you guys are doing. Let's do shake on me, put arms up and the legs, and roll them onto that side of the option. Right, let's see what you guys are putting. I'm assuming again there's a delay, so. Right, the comments are starting to come through. I've got C, C, and again, most of you are going for C's, and it is open the airways. Yeah, make sure they're not choking. What does this sign mean? So I always say again, for those of you who got your test, for those of you who are studying, read the question first look at the image and then go to the answer. Sometimes you can get some clues from the image. Gated road ahead, level crossing without gate or barrier, level crossing with a gate or barrier, and a cattle grid ahead. So let's see what you guys are going for. Sometimes I can see here. Right, um, what's the answer? Right, I have C's. So I've got a C. And I'm assuming this is from this question. Yeah, guys are going for C's. And the answer is level crossing with gate or barrier. So when you see this, it's a level crossing with gate or barrier. What's the main hazard the driver of the red car arrowed should be aware of? So there's the red car. What's the main hazard he should be aware of? The black car may stop suddenly. Oncoming vehicles will assume the driver is turning right. The bus may move out into the road. Glare from the sun may affect the driver's vision. So which one is he got to be aware of?
Mm. See what you guys are going for. So you guys are going for C. Let's just make that slightly smaller. I've got a C. C, you guys are all going for C's. And again, the answer is, yeah, the bus may move off. They can reword this one. Well, not reword, they give you a different answer, which is um, pedestrians walking in front of the bus. But on this one, it is the bus may move off. How can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive or ride? So how can drinking alcohol affect your ability to drive or ride? Your reactions will be faster. Your confidence will be reduced your awareness of danger will be improved, your ability to judge speed will be reduced. So let's see what you guys are going for. And we have, oops, what's my doing now? We've got D, D, and These, you guys are going for these. Yeah, your ability to just speed will be reduced. If you're drinking alcohol, your reactions are going to be a lot slower and the witness is going to be slower. So it's going to be that one. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving your car? Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. Ask your friend if taking medicine affected your driving. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. Drink some strong coffee one hour before driving. So let's see what you guys are going for. With medication, be very careful. If you are taking medication, driving lessons as well, you do need to let your instructor know you are taking medication. And I've got A. A. Right, the answer is check the label to see if the medicine will affect. Yeah, side effects. Some medicines, medicine says it will make you feel sleepy or drowsy. And obviously you don't want to be feeling sleepy or drowsy behind the wheel. Someone's, someone's gone for a D. Drinking coffee is a myth. Coffee doesn't help you. Not for driving anyway. Um, right, check answer. Right. A cycle lane marked by a solid white line is in operation. What does this mean for car drivers? There's a solid white line, 40 miles an hour. You've also got the sign as well. So you've got it on the floor got the image and then go to the quick answers. They mustn't drive along the lane. They mustn't drive along the lane. God, that's worded badly. Um, they may use the lane when necessary. They may drive in the lane at any time. They may park in the lane. Right. Uh, Take a look what you guys are going for. Right, you guys are going for A's. The answer is A, mustn't drive in there. If it's a solid white line, you shouldn't be crossing it. Um, and that's not just for cycle lanes, that's for other lanes as well. So if it's a solid white line, you should not be crossing that white line. This is for driving lessons. 
What should you do before driving in a tunnel? What should you do before driving into a tunnel? Close your sunroof, switch on your windscreen wipers, switch off your radio, take off your sunglasses. So which one do you guys think it is? Um, just waiting for these to come through. I've got a D. D, D, and most of you are going for Ds. Right, the answer is D. If you go for your real test and sunglasses isn't the option, they may use the word tinted glasses. They can use either one of those in the real test, sunglasses or tinted glasses. So if sunglasses isn't there, you're looking for tinted, which is the same thing technically. Oh, what's the meaning of this sign? Waiting restrictions. School crossing patrol, no entry, national speed limit. Mardi Tune, Mardi Tune. That's nothing to do with Newcastle, surely. Um, I got my ferry on Wednesday. I have already passed my ferry. I got my ferry on Wednesday. I already passed. Already passed my ferry already two years ago, but expires in mid July. I can't get no practical test, has potential ones in terms of the amount of clicks. I let's get it back. Um, Mardi, I'm doing the has a perception a little bit later, so stay tuned for that. Um, and I will talk to you about the ferry tests. Stay tuned, I will talk to you about your ferry tests in a minute. Um, let's see what you guys are going for. A, I, you guys are going all A's. Ah, someone's gone for a D. What's D? National speed limit. National speed limit is black and white with a black diagonal line. So it's a black, it's a white circle with a black diagonal line going through. That's the national speed limit. This is a waiting restriction. This also means you cannot Sorry, you can drop off and pick up your passengers, but you can't wait for them. Drop them off, pick them up, but you can't wait. That's the waiting restriction. National speed limit is black and white. What does this sign mean? No route for pedestrians and cyclists. A route for pedestrians and cyclists. A route for cyclists only. A route for pedestrians only. Hopefully you got it right. Both cases, this one and the real test. Right, so let's take a look at the answer. No routes for pedestrians, this route for pedestrians and cyclists. Right, some, oops, keep doing that. Someone's gone for A. Someone's gone for C. Let's take a look at A and C. A is no route for site pedestrians and cyclists. And what was the other one? C, a route for a route for cyclists only. B, B, and, and the rest of you guys are going for B. Right, let me just quickly explain why A and C are not correct. First of all, if it's no, it's going to be a red circle. 95% of red circles are no's. So if it's a red circle, then yes, if it had those images in that red circle, but it hasn't. So that's the reason why that isn't. Look at the image. That's what I said. Look at the image first, then go to the answers. You've got cyclists or a bike and pedestrians. 
C is a route for cyclists only, but it doesn't add up. It's got two images, so it needs two answers in it that make sense. So it's going to be B, a route for pedestrians, a route and cyclists. Two images, it has to have two bits and pieces in the answer, and that's how you work it out. Why should the junction on the left be kept clear? So the junctions here on the left, always look at the image first, the junctions here. Why should it be kept clear? To allow the bus to reverse, to allow vehicles to enter and emerge, to allow vehicles to park, to allow vehicles to make a U-turn. So which one do you think it is? I agree. Um, it doesn't help when you've got two questions together with the same answers. So it's hard for me to tell out which one's which, but I believe there is a big delay, a lot longer than normal. But that's YouTube for you, or my internet, one of the two. I've got a B. And I've got a B. And again, most of you are going for Bs. It's to leave junctions clear um, so cars can get in and out. Um, it's more courtesy than anything else. So, because if you're blocking it and they can't go, you're going to get them irate, which is going to cause road rage. So that's why you leave junctions clear. Also for emergency vehicles getting in and getting out because blue lights can get through traffic. Right, uh, what did you say it was? B. Right, how should, how should you signal? Oh, this is gonna be interesting. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? We had this conversation about three, four weeks ago. How should you signal if you are going straight ahead at a roundabout? Signal right on approach and then left to leave the roundabout. Signal right on approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Signal left after you leave the roundabout, enter the new road. And they're talking about big roundabouts, by the way, not mini roundabouts. So when a roundabout question comes up, it's a big roundabout they're talking about, not mini roundabouts. No problem. You know if you're right. Like I said, it's just the way it is. Um, there is a big delay this week for some reason. But my internet connection is 100%. So it's got to be YouTube for some reason. It's saying it's bank holiday as well. So the more people online, the slower it's going to be. I've got C. I'm assuming C is for this question. Let's just wait for some more responses to come through. Blessed for the best. I ain't seen you before. Welcome. C. So you guys are going for C. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Mouthful. Well, it is correct. There's no signal on approach to a roundabout to go straight. Obviously, once you pass the exit, you no longer need, then you're going to signal left to come off. You're following a slower moving vehicle. What should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right? Slow down and, pre slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. Only consider overtaking when you pass the junction. Accelerate quickly to overtake before reaching the junction. Overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling. So which one do you think it's going to be? Yeah, I figured it was. So like I said, there is a delay because it's taken a long time for the um, letters to pop up. And hopefully this is correct. So B.
Wait for some more to come through. God, they, when they come through, they all pop up really quickly. Um, B, B, yeah, you guys are going for the Bs. And James has got a B as well. Yeah, it's B. Only consider once you pass the junction, because if you signaled right to get past the slow moving vehicle, the question is, are you passing the vehicle or are you going to turn right on that? So only consider once you pass. You're behind this cyclist. The traffic lights change, what should you do? Tap your horn and drive through first. Turn right, but give the cyclist room. Allow the cyclist time and room. Try to move off before the cyclist. And just in case you didn't know, the first line where the cyclist has stopped is called advanced stop line. That's where cyclists stop. You'll be stopping here. So you can see the cyclist clearly. That's what it's for just in case you didn't know. Right, I've got... Again, I'm assuming these are for the other question because that's totally wrong. So I won't pull it up. Right, now these ones are coming. Ugh, keep doing it. Um, C. C. I've got a C. And you guys are going for C's. And the answer is, yeah, allow cyclists time and room. And I will add on the driving lesson and the driving test. You're not in a rush. So always take your time. Make sure it's safe to pass cyclists or horses. The examiner understands that. So there's always going to be 100% on that. Um, so that is straightforward. For those of you who haven't booked a test and are here, there's nothing wrong with booking a theory test. Think about realistically how much studying you can do if it's five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, and then book your test in the future and aim for it because you can study, 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 and that test date never comes around before you know three, four months has passed. There's nothing wrong with setting a goal. Set a date, work towards it. If you feel like you're not going to be ready for the test date, push it back. As long as you do it before the free cancel it, free working days, um, you won't lose your fee and just push it back. So set yourself a goal um, and it gives you motivation on that. So... If there's any questions, pull it in the chat now. Otherwise, I'm going to go on to a demonstration of has perception. The signs that confuse me is the two-way opposite traffic signs. How many similar signs of those exist? Also, the arm signals also confuse me like the circular motion one and the others. Thanks. Um, I haven't got the image of the signs here and I can't get it up. Can't get it up at the moment. Right, the two-way one, I know what you're talking about, the one in the triangle. Again, you've got the arrows going up and down like that, and you've got the arrows going across. You are a driver, you're going from bottom to top. So when you're going up with the arrow and the other one's coming down, that's two-way traffic straight ahead. When you've got the arrows going across and you're going up, it's traffic crosses a two, sorry, crossing, Two-way traffic crosses a one-way street. You're always going up and it's crossing your path. That's the best way to think about that. Um, let me just get your comment back up if I can find it. What was the other one? Also arm signals. How many similar arm signals? How many similar signs of those exist? Right, that's the two-way one. It's only two. But remember, you're going up with the arrow, so you're facing um, oncoming traffic. So there's two-way traffic straight ahead. And the other one was arm signals. Right, the arm signals out of a car is the right hand sticking out of the car. If it's doing a circular motion, it's turning left. If the arm is sticking out and stays out, no movement, it's turning right. And then going up and down, is slowing down. There's only three arm signals, there's only three signals on the car when you think about it. indicators left, indicators right, and brake lights. That's what the arm signals um, represent. So I'll just repeat that. Circular motion of the arm is turning left. No movement 
arm sticking out the car is turning right and up and down is slowing down and the one that comes up on the theory test the most to be fair and um, the real test i'm talking about in terms of feedback that we get is the slowing down one Eighteen out of twenty, Chester. Have you got a fairy test booked? Just reminds me. I think you may have early in the chat. Twenty out of twenty. Again, have you got a fairy test booked? Because there's a lot of you just coming on and getting the questions right, but no test day. Ask yourself why. Right. So I want to come back to a question. Let's say, Mardi. Right. I got my fairy test on Wednesday. Let's. I'm talking about. This Wednesday, I'm assuming, I've already passed my theory all two years ago. Right, okay, so I'm with you on that. But it expires in mid-July. I can't get no practical tests, has perception worries. Right, I'm going to do has perception for you now. Right, so when you take your theory test on Wednesday, what will happen is if you pass it, it's going to replace your old one automatically replaces that one so you've got a new two years so obviously then you've got plenty of time to get a driving test and pass it if you fail it it doesn't affect your old one so you're still going to have until july so have you are you ready for a driving test let me know in the comments yeah i thought you said in the chat earlier on tomorrow 12 pm Good luck with that. I really do wish you luck. I've got my fingers crossed for you. Let me know how you get on. Six City. I can't get any driving instructors that do automatic lessons in Hackney. Oh, you're in Hackney. Wow. What's the best lesson? To what part of Hackney are you in? What's the... So I'm just struggling. In Hackney, what's the best lesson to learn from automatic... I don't understand that bit. What's the best lesson to learn from automatic? There's something missing from here. Is that supposed to be all manual? Are you asking me what's the best to learn, automatic or manual? Just type yes in the chat if I'm saying it right. So what's the best to learn, automatic or manual? Also, let me know what you prefer. It's not about what's the best, it's what you prefer. First time here, welcome Frank. Um, I did search on YouTube on Saturday and your page came up. I have my test tomorrow. How can you help me please tomorrow? <laughs> there's not much I can do. Um, hopefully watch this back. Um, there's other, if you just found the channel, obviously I'm assuming you're watching the videos. Um, keep watching, but there's not much I can do other than go in there, take your time, safety. I, as I keep saying with my video, safety, 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 safety. That's all you're looking for. Um, but obviously your testimony, there's not much I can do between now and then. Um, right, you guys are answering. Let me try and keep up with all of this. Right, let me just start that. Give me one moment. Right. Right, that makes it life a little bit easier. Right, let's start with this one. Right, I've answered that one. That one, I'm waiting for a response back. Uh, hello, how are you? I found difficulty in parking. Any tips for parking in reverse parking? This is a practical lesson you're talking about. Just, again, just type, well, it must be, because it can't, you don't reverse in theory test. Do it's a long day. Um, are you using an instructor? Type yes or no. Let me know if you're using an instructor. Or practicing with family and friends. Yes, my test will be on Saturday. Okay, good luck with that. Let me know how you get on. Um, you've still got a little bit of time to just get some more revision in. Doesn't help. Doesn't do any harm, so say so that doesn't help. It does help. Doesn't do any harm. Mayor Street. Um, okay, let me know 
you got, you got yes. Send me an email with your details because I may be able to get an instructor for you or search for you. Send me, because you're not a million miles away from my family are. Um, send me an email, info at drivingtheoryuk.com. Um, and in, let me know it's on the live because I get so much emails. Let me know it's on the live regarding this and I will try to find an instructor who will do, you want an automatic, I'm assuming, because you type yes. So if you want an automatic, I will try. I'm not promising I can get one, but I will do a search for you, because like I said, you're not a million miles away from where my family is. And that's my old stomping ground, Mare Street as well. Right, is there any, oh, let me go back to the main comments so I can see what's going on. I would say watch the playlist, Frank of the Fairy on the channel. It's a great help. Yeah, watch the playlist, but like I said, you, you can take in, if your test is tomorrow, you can overdo it as well. You can have taken so much information that it doesn't just, it doesn't make sense. We left it late. But as I said, the best way to do is go and tackle it. You've you booked it, take it, see what happens. Ideally, like I said, just go in there, just think safety, see what happens. No, my friend, that's the reason why you're struggling. If you use an instructor, they will give you reference points. I can't, it's hard for me to give that reference points without showing you within the car. That's the reason why. Um, but the only thing I would suggest is jump on YouTube. Um, and my friend's channel, Driving School TV, Francis, he's got quite a few videos on there, breaks it down on there. So I would suggest you do that watch some videos but your best bet is to get an instructor let me show you reference points on their car of how to do it break it down simple it's hard for me to do it when i haven't got the visual clues on that are the dvsa questions on the app the same as the actual test are the dvsa questions on the app no they're not they're sample questions so it's going to be worded slightly differently the no one's got the real questions. Um, as I just said in, in the beginning of this live, I just been licensed by the DVSA. I haven't got my hands on the official questions yet, but I will have. But as I said, I can't use them and I can't give out any information on that. But the questions are sample questions on all the apps. They're not the real questions. And that's why people think they are the real questions. That's why they memorize them. But when you go in this way, it differently throws you. Yeah, just practice, but be careful. Like I said, you can take in too much the night before, the day before. That's why I said um, on previous lives, it's for me personally and my pupils, I think AM test, if you're a morning person, is better. You just don't get up in the morning and study, study, study. When you've got a test in the afternoon, you can do too much. And then you go in there and your brain's fried, to be honest, especially with the weather the way it is at the moment. It's decent hot out there. So um, just be careful you don't overdo it. Right, so I'm going to do a hazard perception because obviously some of you are waiting for that. Let me just get that screen up. Right, I'm going to do a demonstration. Before, um, there was someone as well. I don't think I saved it. Someone said they've got a test coming up and they are worried about the hazard perception and how many times to click. I Let me just go back to this. I mentioned last week, and this is coming up more and more in my classroom. Last week, my pupil himself had has a perception on, we do has a perception on the Tuesday with road signs. And he failed his has perception first attempt on the Tuesday in the classroom. And the reason why he failed, because he did not click um, on obviously getting a score. He got three zeros. The reason why he got three zeros, because he was told he can only click 10 times. Now, it's the wrong mindset. I mentioned this last week. If you're going into a hazard perception with the mindset that you can only click 10 times, 12 times, 14 times, whatever amount of times, the chances are you're going to fail. The reason why he messed up was because the free video clips, the hazards was towards the end. The reason why he didn't click on those hazards because he already counted, he clicked 10 times. Now, what you should be doing with the correct mindset is that you are going to click on problems that exist. If you click on problems that exist, 
you are not going to click too many times. If you are going to count your clicks, you're using nervous energy and you're wasting your time counting clicks. So click on problems that exist. Now the fit, the has the perception is anything that's gonna cause you to slow down or anything that's gonna cause you to change direction. The clicks is you checking the mirrors. That's what it is. So every time you see a problem in real life driving, you click check mirror, whether it's the main mirror or your wing mirrors. On the videos, you're just tapping the screen every time you see a problem. So let me just repeat that. You are looking for anything that's gonna cause you to slow down or change direction and you tap the screen. You are now going to click twice, two click method. There's other people saying click three times. That's fine, I don't teach that. So I know it works, but I don't teach. I don't see the point in doing that. So click once and you're gonna go one, two, and you're gonna click again. I will add the, on the rule test, for those of you who've never taken it before and worried about the hazard perception, it's all CGI's, they're all clear, and it's a little bit slower than the apps itself. You are trying to get a score. It sounds weird what I'm about to say. You are not looking for the hazard, you're just trying to get a score. You have to get in the countdown window. It's no point seeing the hazard, clicking on the hazard, and it's a zero. You're seeing the hazard, but you're trying to get in the countdown window. Starts at five, finishes at one. You need to get a score here. Not here, that's a zero. Not here, that's a zero. So you're trying to get a high score. Let me just catch up on these comments and then I'm gonna do a live demonstration. Yeah, I just couldn't remember who it was. Thank you for reminding me. Hopefully what I just explained makes sense. Right, so let's go back to the as a perception screen. Right, so I'm gonna do a demonstration. This is the one that I use in the classroom because it demonstrates exactly what I'm talking about. And then I'll do a another CGI and talk you through it. So let me know if this makes sense at the end of it. So speed limits. I do not want to speed up if someone's about to overtake me and fill the gap. When you are driving, you should be scanning the road from pavement to pavement, not just watching the cars in front. That's a waste of time. Scanning from side to side, because that's where road signs are. So the blue shop on the corner, if something was coming out of there, I would be clicking, but there's nothing to hit. Same thing for the petrol station on my right, same thing for the road on my left. There's nothing there, so nothing's gonna cause you to slow down. In the distance of black and white poles, suggest a zebra crossing, the woman in the blonde hair, that's the one that's caused me to slow down, that's the one I'm gonna get marked on. And that's how it plays out. Look at the amount of clicks I've done, I've just done six clicks because there's only six problems on the video. Not eight, not nine, not 10. Right, so let me just review it back for you. So the yellow circles are showing you potential problems that could have been an issue. In real life driving, you won't know that. That's why you've got to be clicking. So the blue shop, like I explained, there's nothing there to, um, for me to click on. So you just leave it alone. Same thing to the left and to the right with the side road and the petrol station. As you can see, they've highlight, highlighted that in the amber circle. Well, I'm gonna pause in a minute. Let's go forward, right. Take a look at what they highlighted. The woman behind the mini. I went for the black and white poles because when I'm driving in real life, that woman would mean nothing to me. Like I said, they don't care what you're clicking on as long as you get a score. It really doesn't matter. You guys are taking it a little bit too seriously and pressure, putting pressure on yourself. So it doesn't matter what you click on as long as you get a score. So I went for the black and white poles and then I went looking to see if anyone's there. So here's my second click for the black and white poles. Now I'm going to look for the woman. There's my first click. And there's my second click. You'll always get the highest score. If you've got two flags in your fives um, box, you're always gonna get the highest mark. They're not gonna downgrade you. So there's no benefit in clicking once. 
there's a lot of benefits in clicking twice. And that's how it works. So it's all about getting the score. Hopefully that makes sense. If it does, type in the chat, let me know. Just type yes. Should you only revise CGI clips? No. Do all the clips on there. The better you get at spotting hazards, the better you're going to be, especially for your driving and obviously your theory test. So do all of them. Last preparations before heading out for the theory test. As I always say, the only preparation you can do is literally when you go in there, breathe. It sounds stupid, but breathe. Um, don't, when you feel stressed, just literally take your time, breathe, get, make sure the, um, the brain gets some oxygen. Read the questions very, very carefully. If you have to read it two or three times, then read it two or three times. Let me come back to that. Um, there's nothing wrong with reading it two or three times. If you're not sure of what the answer is, flag it, move on. And then when you finish your 50th question, go back to the flag one. Do not go back to number one and go through all 50. Because you've got time in your hands, if you did that, you're going to start talking yourself out the correct answers and change the wrong, so right answers to wrong answers. Only go back to the flagged ones. That's why you flag it. And then when you go back to the flagged ones, if you still don't know what the answer is, go backwards. Work out which one it can't be. There's some stupid answers on there. Just eliminate that. And then you're probably left with a 50-50 and then you go from there. Remember, you're looking for the safe option. Nothing more, nothing less. Safe option or a controlled outcome. And that's the last bits and pieces before you head out for your theory test. Right, I'm going to do... Right, I've got yeses on here. So it does make sense. I'm going to do that video again. I'm going to show you something as well. I'm going to re redo that video. All right. So... This is what happens when you start clicking all over the place. So um, let's just go back to that video. So road signs, the 30 miles now. I don't want to um, pick up speed. Someone's going to fill the gap. Brake lights, he's slowing down. I'm slowing down. So I clicked. So you've got the blue shop. Let's just say I'm going to click on that. Then I've got the petrol station coming up on my right hand side. Nothing there, but I'm clicking. The road to my left, nothing there, but I'm clicking. I've clicked for the woman that I can see in the distance. I've clicked for the zebra crossing. And then I'm clicking for the woman again. That's common. That's what you guys do. Click on everything that you think is a possible um, hazard. Let's take a look at the result. Oh, sorry, you guys, you guys can't see that, sorry. Um, so that's my mistake. Let me just do that again, because you guys can't do it. Just can't see it, sorry about that. I apologise. Right, speed limits. So, brake lights. Indicator. Then I'm scanning the road up ahead. Blue shop on the corner. Nothing there, but like I said, I'm clicking. And again, this is what you guys do. You just click for anything random. Petrol station to my right. Side road to my left. Woman in the blonde hair behind the mini. Zebra crosses, black and white poles. And then I go for the woman again. And then just in case, there's always a just in case person in the classroom. Too many flags. That's a waste of time, waste of nervous energy you're wasting. Still got five out of five. Do you see what I'm trying to say to you guys? How much time did I click? Let me go back to that so you can actually see it. Let me just do this. Oops, that's the wrong one. Right, let's just review. So. I'm just going to speed it up. I'm going to pause it there. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 clicks. And I still didn't get a zero. Question now, you have to ask yourself, why are you running about 10 clicks or 12 clicks? I think when I did it originally, um, I think it was about six clicks altogether because I'm clicking on problems that exist. That's 
those, those clicks you see at the bottom, that's wasted energy you guys are stressing over. Click on stuff that's gonna cause you a problem. All you gotta do is say to yourself, is that gonna cause me a problem? If his answer is yes, click. Simple as that. I'll do another one and demonstrate it. Um, when clicking, hope it won't pause the video. I don't know what you mean by that. If you're clicking on the app, no. In the real video, no. So in the real test, no. But just explain if I'm not if you if I'm not explaining that properly. Just explain what you mean by when clicking. Hope it won't pause the video. And is the yellow sign going to come up as an indicator? On the real test, no, this is an app, it's just showing you, so you're revising, basically. Same thing like I do, you've answered the question, you answer it wrong, um, and I explain it. The yellow circle is just explanation of what could have been a problem, it's not the problem, what could have been a problem. Has a perception seems harder than the multiple tries. Has a perception, once you know what you're looking for, it's easier, the, has, the questions are harder, because you don't know what 50 questions you're gonna get. My courses are fully booked up. I mentioned at the beginning, I just found out today that I'm fully booked up until October at this point in time. I think after I've done that little stint, I may take the rest of the year off, to be honest. Um, thanks, I've got 17, my hazard perception. Wow, that's high, 70 out of 75, well done to you. But hopefully you passed the questions as well. No point getting 70 on the hazard perception and failing on the um, questions. I failed one mark past, I failed by one mark past hand perception. My feelings on the one mark, I would rewind this back and listen to me rant about failing by one. I've got a video on the channel about failing by one. Um, I'm not gonna really go into that now at this point. I'm gonna do another videos just to explain. I'll do a CGI. Um, let's do this one. I think I've done it my last week. Let's do something totally different. Oh, let's do this one. I ain't seen this one before. Right. So I'm scanning the road. Hopefully you can see that I'm scanning the road ahead. So cars are parked. And there's people in the road. So I'm going to click on that. He's cars reversing. I think I was well late on that one as well. Technically, I can click on that van because it's gonna make me shift out to the right. I can't see round the bend, so you should always slow down into a bend, accelerate out. Again, I can't see round this bend, so I'm gonna click on that. I don't know what's around the corner. It's actually telling me slow on the floor, so that's why it's worth clicking. And again, I can see around this bend, so I'm not clicking for that. There you go. And then just review it back. So hopefully this is making sense. It's just literally ask yourself, is it gonna cause me a problem, yes or no? And then click on that, go down that route. So there's my first click. Very close to the um, beginning and I also go for a second one just to cover myself, just in case. That's the reason why, if that first click was too early, as much as I've seen it, it would be a zero. So that's why you go for two clicks, just to cover yourself, just in case the first one was too early. So like I said, if you click on the problems that exist, you will not be clicking too many times. Stop wasting your energy, your nerves, worrying about how many times you are going to click. Because if you click on the right things, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have the right amount of clicks. And I will stress again, you're looking for an issue, something that's gonna cause you to slow down or change direction. Simple way around it is just say to yourself, is it gonna cause me a problem, yes or no? If it's a yes, click. That's what I do with my drivers um, when I'm doing driving lessons. Is it safe, yes or no? And let me go from there. So hopefully 
that makes more sense for those of you struggling with um, the hands of perception. Well done, that's what I like to hear. Congratulations. How do you know if a video with a double hazards? See, this is what I'm talking about. James, why are you worrying about which one's got double hazards? If you're clicking on the right things, you're going to get the double hazard anyway. There's no way of knowing which one's a double hazard. You're wasting your energy worrying about double hazards. Click on the problems and you will automatically get the double hazard anyway. It doesn't matter. But if you're going to worry about which one is, then you're going to stop clicking on most of them. When you think you've got the doubles, let's say the double hazard was the fourth one that you thought it was the fourth one, then the other 10 videos, you're not going to keep clicking. You're only looking for one hazard. That's dangerous because ideally you want an eight or a nine on your double. So if your average drops on one video, let's say you've got a two or a one, or worst case, you've got a zero on one, that an eight or nine brings the average up. But if your average is a three or four on your double, you're already minus because technically you need two threes. You should be getting a six minimum on your double to keep the average, to keep the average up. So do not worry about doubles. Click on the problems that exist and you're going to be fine. Worry about your doubles, worry about the amount of clicks, you're gonna struggle because you're already thinking about something else. It's simple as that. But hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, uh, Roger Deep, hello, tomorrow is my exam, this is my second attempt, I'm too worried about every question because I've passed my hazards. Again, rewind this and watch what I said before, just take your time, read the questions very carefully. Uh, but I wish you luck with that, let me know how you get on. apps there's go online there's um online free um training tools for that and on the apps is what i'm using i'm using driving test success but all the apps will have the theory test bits and pieces on there yeah uh info at driving theory uk dot com is the email address info at drivingtheoryuk.com or if you send me a message on Instagram but your best best email I more respond to my emails than my Instagram at the moment because I like some doing 101 things in the background especially with the DVSA um, bits and pieces that I've got coming through at the moment Failed my tests multiple times due to dyslexia and the last three, four tests have been one mark. One mark. I've got my test rebooked tomorrow. Okay. Um, my advice with that, because I suffer from dyslexia, but mine is mild. Um, what helps when the students come in the classroom with me and they tell me they've got dyslexia. When you go in the test, um, they should have the headphones. Use headphones, have it read to you through the headphones and you just have to press on the question or answers and it's just reread over and over again. Sometimes it's a lot easier having it read to you than you trying to read it, because I know what I'm like when I'm reading it, the words get jumbled up. I know what it says, but it doesn't come out quite right sometimes. So that could be a help to you. And again, I wish you luck tomorrow. Listen to him, people, he knows what he's doing. Thank you very much, Joy. Check out this study with me says, yep, yeah, pass my theory test in just one sitting. 45 out of 50 has perception, 61 out of 75. Well done, Joe. Thank you for the words. Appreciate that. Will constant doing of mock tests in the 4 in one app be sufficient to pass in or will there be a need to revise more than that? <laughs> That's a good question. Now, the question is how are you studying for the 4 in one If you're just going to keep doing mock tests, it's trial and error. At some point, you keep doing it you're going to know that the question's wrong, you're going to get it right. If you're, if you're understanding the question, yes. But if you're going to just do it, failed it, right, I know which one I got wrong, and then you're going to get it right next time, no. Because all you're doing is memorising it technically. You need to understand it. But if you understand it, yes, the app is going to be enough. Rules on the road, the motorway, study with me series. There's, again, you've got a head start, 20 question mock tests and rules of the road. 
and motorways on that one. Which app can I use? Which app can I use? I am using three in one kit. You can use any app you like, but go for the paid version. Do not, I repeat, do not go for the free version. All you're gonna get is a stripped down version. You've got to ask yourself, what's it worth to you? 4 99 or taking another theory test, which is what, 23 50 nowadays, I think it is. So ask yourself what's more important. And also with the four in one app, You've got driving bits and pieces on there, which you're going to use for your driving lessons later on as well. So you might just do four ninety nine. All of them cost more or less more or less four ninety nine. The DVSA one and the one I use, the four in one, um, cost four ninety nine. There's another one, Ferry Test Pro, but those two are the better ones: the DVSA and the uh, Driving Test Excess. Okay, there's no more questions. I'm going to leave it there for this week. Next week. I am going to go back to the 50 questions. So it won't be no, um, unless I get a massive request between now and then, I won't be doing a hazard perception. It's going to do 50 questions because you guys who have got tests coming up, um, I want to make sure we do a mock test and go through any difficult questions that may come. On the 20 questions, the questions seem to be easier rather than difficult on the 50 question mock test. Um, let me just answer this last question. Are the CGI videos on the phone one app harder than the ones in the actual exam? It's CG, are the CGI videos on the 4-in-1 app harder? They're the same. CGI, it's not the same videos, but it's, CG, it's a video. You just got to click on the hazard perception. You guys looking for an easy way out. Hazard perception is hazard perception. Either way you look at it, if it's CGI's or the real life clips. All you got to do is see the problem, click. Don't stress over it. See a problem, click on the problem, done. When you start worrying about, is it the same? Is it different? That's time and effort wasted because either way, whether it's the same or different, you're still clicking. You still need to score fives and fours, so it makes no difference. Stop stressing, stop worrying, stop wasting nervous energy. Do what I'm telling you. See the problem, click, laughing. And on that note, James, thank you very much. God bless all of you guys. For those of you who got a fairy test this week, fingers crossed, good luck praying for you. Let me know how you got on. For those of you who haven't booked a fairy test that was here, book one, work towards the goal. We'll work together because I'm here every single Monday and I'm doing a video every Thursday as well. So I will see you guys next Monday. God bless.